This is what I'm feeling like. Da, 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 da. Let me tell you what I'm feeling like. Da, 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 da. Yo, yo, what up, though, people? Like to welcome you back to the Keep It a C No podcast. As always, I am your boy Brown. To the left of me, we got Vito. What up, though, Vito? I don't know. Same shit every different day. Oh, man, we've been missing in action for a minute. Shout out to everybody that's tuned in. We are back. If this your first time tuning in, salute to you. Do us a favor. Hit the sub button, like button, and the bell so you can stay notified when we drop new content. Don't be afraid to leave a comment. If you agree, disagree, want to correct us on something, want to call one of us an Uber, let us know in the comments. Just make sure you keep the C note and make sure you share this video with someone that likes to talk sports and entertainment just like you so that we can all talk that talk together. Funniest thing I've seen recently in sports, this is that time of the year where football teams start throwing out money, crazy money to players. Jordan Love just cashed out. He is now the highest paid quarterback in football history. Four years, $220 million. He got like 150 something guaranteed. Then he got like another 75 in a signing bonus money. So he definitely broke the bank. Tua also recently got paid four years, 212. And he got like 167 guaranteed. I'm baffled that I know this is that time of the year where every year they throw that money out there. But I'm baffled that Jordan Love is going to make $55 million a year. I mean, congrats on getting the bag. But for one year, one playoff win, they damn sure cash that ball out. Like, I ain't going to diss him because obviously they've had him in their facility for years so they know better than we know obviously but the two a thing i don't understand because he's one concussion away from being done and if he come out this year and get that one concussion and you owe him 167 million guaranteed that's just ridiculous but what's your thoughts on the signings Vito? you cool with him yeah no no hell no why not because there's no way in the world that the best player in your league shouldn't be the highest paid player or at least in the top five. There's no way that a mid-level guy should be the highest paid player, especially if a guy who ain't really did shit. Who you calling the mid-level guy? I love. The, okay. Tua, Both of them? I was recalling David Tua. Yeah, Tua. Oh, Tua? Both of them. Both of them? Yeah. Okay. Well, like, you know, probably like top 15. Move your top, mic up, son. Top 15, top 20, something like that. But my thing is, it's a, it should be a hierarchy. Pat, Joe, Josh, right. guys like that should be the highest. It should be tiers. Like, when you're the top guys, they should be all in, in the same like right. bracket as far as getting paid. Then you got a second tier, third tier, all the way down. There's no but way they in the don't world. do it like that. Yeah, no way in the world. Just because you next up, yeah. you should get paid. Yeah, that, that that's crazy. I'm a, I'm a 49ers fan, but there's no way in the world Brock Purdy should be the highest paid quarterback coming up. So it, right now, next year, that's where he's exactly. going to be, about $60 million a year. There's no way in the world he should be the highest paid. Yeah, that's crazy. And uh, again, Jordan Love might turn out to be nice, but for right now, for what I've seen, it's just one year. And it wasn't a crazy year. They made a run late. They won a playoff game, but it was against Dallas. So, you know what I mean? That ain't nothing too special. They fought against y'all. Yeah. You know what I mean? But that's that's a heavy bag. And two it definitely, man. Just because of the concussions, I'm cool yeah. on that. But NFL, they uh, Vegas, they recently... Release the MVP odds for this season. You said Mahomes. Of course, he's number one. C.J. Stroud is number two. Then you got Josh Allen at three. Joe Burrow at four. Jordan Love at five. 
Lamar Jackson at six, Jalen Hurts at seven, Brock Purdy at eight, Aaron Rodgers and Dak Prescott round out the top ten. Wish your thoughts. You got any takeaways from Vegas and these MVP odds, Vito? Uh, some of them I agree with, but uh, some more that I don't agree with. Like, I don't know what, like the Jordan Love. You don't know why. I, I didn't understand Jordan Love. Like, again, it's one year. Mm-hmm. Like, you know what I mean? So, I if, don't know. It, what, what The sleeper in this whole list to me is Aaron Rodgers. Because if he played like he usually played, all they have to do is be like a playoff team, and he's already oh, going to be yeah, in the Rams. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but I definitely got Pat at one. And I'm not mad at C.J. Stroud because – being last year, him being a rookie, first year head coach, all that shit, not no real big name players. Now they got some players. Right. Now, is that going to backfire on them, or are they going to hold that against him like they did Rock? Because right. for some reason, that's the that was a new narrative, yeah. but only for Purdy. Like you got all these good players, so is that going to take away from me? See, that uh, now I know you said you not mad with the C.J. Stroud thing. And I ain't even going to lie. At at one point last season, I thought he might have been the MVP of the season. And I know they just got digs and all that. But you know what I always say, Vito. The NFL got a year worth of tape on this kid now, man. So for for where everybody is putting him after his rookie year, let's just take into consideration they have a whole season on a tape on him. Not saying that he can't or mm-hmm. won't repeat this, but let's cut the kids some slack if it just so happens that he comes out this season and the numbers yeah. don't meet them expectations. Right. They, they got a year tape on him, so if he struggles, it could be that, and then maybe next year he'll adjust. Right. But at the end of the day, every quarterback after this first year – the defense and other teams has a year of tape right. on them. You just got to adjust. Right. You just got to adjust. Then what, how long will it take for the chemistry with yeah. him and Diggs? Yeah. Is it going to take away from, like, Nico Collins and all of them Definitely. that had good good years uh, last season? But uh, I was surprised that Jared Goff wasn't top ten because he got a, a top five ten running uh, wide receiver. He got good running backs. They got a good O line. He had a tight end that just a whole had a good team. Yeah. So I and and I I expect them to be good again this year. So I don't know why he wasn't. Yeah, uh, I would have to take Jordan Love out and put him in. And 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 I don't understand what uh I don't understand why every year we continue to put Josh Allen so high because he's gonna play football, but it's gonna come a a three, four game stretch where he's just going to always look. I mean, well, he's going to not look, but he's going to take himself out to be an MVP uh, race. He be having Brett Favre moments. <laughs> yeah, so, but I don't know every year why they put this guy so high. He, he's still good, man. You got to give him his credit. Um, I'm also upset about uh, Stafford not making top ten. And one of the reasons is because I've seen a lot of people recently, like a lot of the analysts got him top five, Mm -hmm. top ten current quarterbacks. He's coming into season. uh, We got a new offensive line. We got Cooper and Puka both healthy going into the season. Kyron Williams. Like, we, we got something a little sneaky. So if you put him in, who do you take out? Me personally... I think the the situation with Dallas is like either me or you with Dak or CD. I think Dak ain't going to be in no MVP running this year. I don't think he's top 10. So I take him out for sure, for sure. Mm -hmm. Um, And I know you just said you think, and and you was right. All he got to do is make the playoffs. and he. But I don't think Aaron Rodgers should be top 10 in MVP voting. I don't just off the yeah, shirt, he didn't I, play last year. Yeah, I don't I don't think that either. But uh if we had to do who if we had to do our odds, who you think would be your top three 
for MVP going into the season? Uh, let me see. I'm going to go Pat, CJ, and I'm going to go Aaron. Just on the, for, for the reason I said. All oh. they got to do, they got a weaker division. He's still good. They got some good players. All they got to do is make the playoffs, and he's going to be in the rankings. Okay. I'm going a, I'm, I'm to a flip my, my line up. I'm going to go Burrow, Golf for the things that I said, mm-hmm. and I'm going to put Stafford in there because I think Stafford, if the Rams play good, I think Stafford is going to have a sleeper year, so I'll put him in there. Staff, listen, one thing I'd say, like, we go back and forth, but Stafford is always going to be in the run because that – Motherfucker is going to throw the ball regardless. Now, now, let me ask you one other question about Stafford real quick, right? Because I just said a lot of analysts got him top five, top ten, all in them, all in a list. But a lot of these same analysts said that he's not a Hall of Fame uh, quarterback even with the ring. So, if Matthew Stafford was the winner MVP... Would that cement Matthew Stafford with everybody that he's a Hall of Famer? He got the ring. He got the MVP. He got two top wide receivers in the record books. Yes, no. Keep it a C note. I'm going to keep it a C note. Even if he didn't have a ring. Because before the, prior to this, I didn't think he was a Hall of Famer. But even without the ring, what he's done, he has the, two, the, the record for the two best seasons for a receiver. Right. The record for the rookie receiver. Right. The motherfucker got a, a million passing yards. Right. So there's people in their Hall of Fame with less than him. So right. he definitely should be a Hall of Fame. But so you think that that a MVP would it solidify it? Yeah. You heard it from from a rival, uh, Stafford. So you might want to turn up that MVP might might go your shit, way. But he might get it without. I think he a Hall of Fame without the shit. Yeah, me too. Shout out Matthew Stafford. We ain't do pick one, clip one in a while, Vito, and I know you said you wanted to do pick one, clip one. We already talked. Dak Prescott, C.D. Lamb, they're both fighting for the same money. Pick one, clip one. Who would you give the money to if you was Jerry or if you was running the Cowboys? I'm going to give it to C.D. Wow. C.D.'s going to be cheaper and he's younger. And okay. he's coming into his prime. That look frustrated. He older, and he's gonna be way more expensive. Right. So I go, I go out there, get trade or release whatever they, whatever it is with that, and go find the young up and comer. Right. And pair him with the young team they got. Listen, if if, if you sign C D Lamb, he's gonna be the highest paid wide receiver right now. But that means that he's that guy, and uh. You should be able to bring another quarter. They still got your guy, Trey. Yeah. They still got Trey Damn, over there developing. Trey. So not just that. Now that Jordan Love got this contract, Dak, what he's done in the NFL and at his age, he's not worth anything over $55 million a year. So what Jordan Love get? $55 million, I believe, a year. Dak should get more than that, though. Who? Dak's done more than him, so he should get more than that. He should. Yeah. I mean, if we go, but are, what I'm saying, are you going to give him the numbers? Well, see, he's talking to a motherfucker that ain't on that level. But, but if, no, no, no. If we what, I'm that saying, as an owner, what I'm saying, as an owner, you you could give Dak over $55 million a year, or you could give CD over 35 a I'm year. Going C, of course I'm going CD because he's cheaper. Like, yeah, for all I, the reasons I said. Right, right. right. But well, as far as Jordan Love, I feel like Dak should be paid higher than Jordan Love. Okay, I, I'm not mad at that because I don't think Jordan Love should be getting 55, <laughs> so I'm not going to sit here and debate that. But since we talk in Dallas, we know they got Dak. They got C.D. Lamb in a contract dispute. But after this upcoming season, they're going to also have to pay Micah Parsons. Mm-hmm. Now, unfortunately, Vito, for your team, and I know you don't think it's a big deal, right now you got Trent Williams said, I'm not coming into play until I get a new contract. He wants a contract. Ayuk wants a contract or a trade. And then next year, you got to play Purdy. So, without being biased, which we already know you're going to be biased, if, if you right. was running either team, 
which situation would you rather be in? The Dak situation with Dallas or the San Fran situation? Non-biased, I would rather be in the San Fran situation for these reasons. For one, it seems like we always get our play with players to restructure. Right. To, to make room for other players. Right. Two, Trent on his way out. Right. So I feel like he he, he going to want a nice check because he know he on his way out. Right. But it's going to be a short-term deal. You know what I'm saying? So right. I ain't mad. And then for some reason, we know how to finesse them numbers. Like it might be a – it might sound like a good deal, like with the uh, Chase Young shit. Like, that was only really a one-year trial. But yeah, you know I know. Saying? So, we do a lot of those. So, i rather, in, um, on the Dallas side of things, they be like, even though, like, the bullshit with the IU, we did that with Debo as far as waiting to the last minute to pay. But the Dallas players, they like disgruntled employees. Them motherfuckers ain't taking no pay cuts. Right. They want top dollar. And that's because how Jerry treat them motherfuckers. Right. I, I would rather go. I would take San Fran, too, just on the strength that they got more talent than Dallas. Like, all the way around the yeah. board. Like, you know what I mean? They had more talent. So, even if you got that problem with, like, a IU, you, you still got a Debo. You still got Kittle. You still got McCaffrey. You know what I mean? And you still got multiple pieces on the defense, so I think they better off. Last one with football. Pick one, clip one. Who would you rather have as your starting quarterback, C.J. Stroud or Jordan Love, the two hot young guys right now in the NFL? Keep it a C note. Who would you rather have? I'm going to go Stroud because he takes more chances. Okay. Jordan Love, he, Jordan Love nice, though. I ain't going to front on him, but. I feel like he's a little more conservative. He accurate though, way more than I thought he was. But I, I'm a, I'm gonna go Stroud. I agree with you. I'm I'm gonna go Stroud too. Um, and I know it is gonna be the tape thing, but realistically, there's no tape on Jordan Love either for a full season. So I'm gonna just go Stroud just because he's already. In my eyes, because I'm used to quarterbacks from coming from uh, where he came from, Ohio State. I'm used to them guys being duds in, yeah, the, yeah. in the NFL. So, just what he did in one season, I'm a believer. And even if the numbers aren't better, he should still have good numbers with mm-hmm. more weapons. So, I take C.J. Stroud. Now, we know Team USA is in full effect. Got a lot going on over Paris, and it was a lot made recently about the exhibition games and all that. So, Vito, I want to ask you, do you think it was a fair comparison to put this Team USA up against the Dream Team? Yes, no, keep it a C note. For some reason, every time LeBron plays in the Olympics, they compare the teams. No team is comparable to the Dream Team. Right. Like, I don't even know what we're talking about it. These guys are good. They right. should win. But don't get it fucked up. The way they play, they can take a loss. Right. So it's and not even close. What do close. you mean the way they play? They Can play too, like... They play, they play like, like they don't give a fuck. They play like they're in the NBA. Yeah, they, exactly. No, no, not like a, a regular season game. They, they play like you said. Like it's an all-star game. A whole lot of nonchalant play. Yeah. The only motherfucker I can see that's really going to go hard... It's probably Anthony Davis. Yeah. Not Anthony Davis, Anthony Edwards. The rest oh. of them guys been around so long, they just going through the motions. Like, you know what I'm saying? The motherfuckers already rich. They don't give a fuck. Okay, listen. I don't think it was a fair comparison, right? And over the years, Vito, we done heard everything. The world is catching up. Um... The world, they get to play together all year round, so they got more team chemistry. Now the new thing on social media, if you've seen it, is, oh, this year in the Olympics is this many international players that play in the NBA compared to when the dream team. Listen, all of that is excuses. The the world didn't Uh catch up to the NBA. The NBA took a step back, me personally. 
Because I was, I was texting you doing one of the exhibition games, and I did tell you, I said, man, they play like they're in an all-star game. Mm-hmm. One of them games you seen, Katina Mobley, he was pointing out some things like they wasn't moving everybody. It was like iso ball. No defense. And that's when I, when, when I said they playing like they're in the NBA because I told you they look like deers in headlights when when they get a pick set for them and the guy fights over the pick and doesn't switch. A lot of times they look like deers in Who's headlights. The coach? Kerr. Exactly. They need, you know, maybe not specifically this person, but this person's type attitude. They need a person with an attitude to coach them, like a Kevin Garnett. Like you see how no bullshit, no like Rashid Wallace, somebody yeah. a coach with that mentality, but also up to date with the play, not no old school mentality. Right. You know what I'm but saying? even even with that, like we criticize and beat about shooting too many jumpers. Kerr put that guy in the paint the whole game. He, he can't. He doesn't look comfortable playing the whole game with his back to the basket at all. And I remember it, it might have been years ago. I think you said it, Vito. It might be him. B that is. just likes the. The play that finesse game. he does not look comfortable. Like, like a lot of people make the mistake of thinking your size determines your position. Like they say, Oh, you seven foot, so you're center. Nah, just because you're seven foot don't mean you are center. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like if I had him be what I would do is I I you have to like bargain with listen, first two quarters, I want you to go down to the box, right. abuse them, get them in foul trouble, get your numbers up, and let the game come easy to you. Then the, the next two, you can start shooting all them jump shots. Right, right. I agree with that. Um, so, yeah, I think, and even with the, when y'all say, all oh, these guys been playing for years together, they got, they had chemistry when they dream. They were already playing for years. Hell yeah. A lot of them guys that they played against in Barcelona played on the 88 team, too. Think, think about it. Think about when Sabonis came. Sabonis came over here when he was older. A- after, yeah. So before he came over here, who do you think he was playing? He was playing with them guys. And, and, and I'm, I'm glad you mentioned Sabonis because I don't know if he was in that NBA camp. But see, a lot of things get overlooked because when you go back to the 92 Olympics, that's when the uh, Soviet Union had just mm-hmm. broke up. And if you remember basketball back then, when Soviet Union had a clutch on everything, they weren't letting guys come over here mm-hmm. to play basketball. And if you look up uh, 92 in Barcelona, like seven of the teams, like out of them little countries, seven of them teams, they made like one little all-star team to compete because they wasn't part of the, you know what I mean, well, the Soviet Union thing broke up and all of that. But a lot of that play a part that nobody's mentioning. It could have been way more NBA international players. And they're talking about the world because, like, them uh, foreign players wasn't dogs back then. Yeah, they was dogs. Petrovic, Marcelonis, all them dudes. Them dudes could play. Um, Since we talking NBA, we just talk NFL, Vito. Let's take current NBA players and compare them to current NFL players. Let's do five of them. Keep it a seat. No, who who would you compare? All right, uh, I'm gonna compare. I'm gonna compare Kyrie to a guy like Lamar Jackson. You okay. Know, real real quick movements, real fancy. Yeah. Ain't that great going deep? Right. But can get it done going deep. Right. You can, you can count on him, but you can also count on him like to fold from time to time. Right. You know what I'm saying it's a lot of controversy with both of these players. I agree, but for different reasons. I'm gonna compare uh, Luca to Josh Allen. Big body, run motherfuckers over, make mm-hmm. the shit look so easy. Yeah, like motherfuckers be moving out his way, and another motherfucker, Luca in the clutch, will turn that motherfucker over just like Josh yeah. Allen. Yeah, and yeah. lose a big game. I'm gonna compare Dame Lillard to Joe Burrow. Ice in his veins, always calm, cool, and collected. Come up big in big spots, but just can't get over the hump. Okay. I'm going to compare Steph Curry to Pat Mahomes. I feel like Steph Curry's still the top dog, like Pat. Right. You know, big plays, come through in the clutch. You can count on them to go, you know what I'm saying, go deep, be clutch. All the shit that Steph does, Pat does. So the best player right now. Yeah. To me. Okay. And with this last one, I didn't go, like, as the top player. I just went out for motherfucker that I fuck with that's, that be, kind of be getting shitted on both right. sides. 
I'm going to compare Russell Westbrook to Russell Wilson. Okay. Player that used to be the shit. Right. Big numbers, big splash plays, real fast, real athletic. But lately, even though their numbers are still solid, just on the strength of they're not what they used to be and they don't look like they used to be, but media and regular right. people be shitting on them. But I feel like both of them can have a good season this year. Okay, shout out to that. Hey, shout out to the Steph and Mahomes, John. That was my honorable mention, yeah. but I ain't want you know if I would have said that everybody was gonna be oh Brad nobody's <laughs> hating. Cause you know we would come with that pause. Like is that mean but that's why I asked you, best player? Hell yeah. All right, so first off, I know this guy's a foreign player, but just his phenomenon, Wimbenyamba. I'm comparing him to C.J. Stroud because it's the same thing. Because Both in Texas? uh, uh, Not just both in Texas because I didn't even think about that. A lot of people said Wimbin Yama should have been defensive player of the year. You had people say C.J. Stroud should have been rookie of the year. A lot of people saying Wimbin Yama going to be defensive player of the year this year and an MVP candidate. Mm -hmm. People, you see where they got C.J. Stroud number two. So so who was offensive rookie of the year? Well, who? You said uh, C.J. Stroud should have been rookie of the year. Who was offensive rookie of the year? No, no, I didn't. They were saying he should have been MVP. MVP. My, yeah, okay, my, yeah, my bad. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, uh, my next one is funny. You said Russ because I'm going to compare Clay Thompson to Russell Wilson. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah. That, guys that, that, that won. A little injury might have set them back. Mm-hmm. The organization and the fans probably don't think that they're the same player, but – they haven't gotten a message yet. Yeah, I can. <laughs> like to them, like Clay is still right, right. Clay still bored yeah, you to can't them. Tell Clay you shit. know what I mean? And even if Russ just had two bad seasons, even though he had a better season last year, but that one, and you can't tell Russ, he still can't yeah, cook. Man. Like you know what I mean? So I could compare them. My next one, Anthony Edwards. I'm gonna compare him to Josh, a uh, uh, Jamar Chase. Pardon me. I'm going to compare him to Jamar Chase because they both young. They both get busy. You bo- you, Jamar Chase thinks he's the best wide receiver in the NFL. Anthony Edwards thinks he's the best player in the league. So I like both of them. Next one, I'm going to do Jimmy Butler. And I'm going to do Fred Warner. Because I think Jimmy Butler, no matter how busy he gets... He always gets overlooked. Mm-hmm. Like Fred Warner get busy. He's probably the best linebacker. Well, he is the best linebacker at his position, but you're always going to hear about the T.J. Watts, yeah, yeah. the Bosa's, yeah. and dumb guys. So it's like he go under the radar, so that's why I compare them to. My last one, Sixers fans, you're going to be mad at me, but you're really <laughs> going to be mad at me. Because I'm comparing Embiid to the Eagles rivalry. I'm comparing him to Dak Prescott. Got the numbers. Dak may not have the injuries that Embiid has. Neither one of them can get past the second round. Never played in the championship round. I mean, so. But again, they Dak, a lot of people going to argue with Dak because his numbers is always there. Embiid, get, he averaged 30 something points yeah. again. You know what I mean? He get busy, but. When they get to that that time to really play, it's like both of them guys is the same, just different sport. Mm. You know what I mean? But let me ask you this, though. Speaking of the Sixers, they're saying they're going to give him B the super max contract, ream up, even though he got a lot of years left on his deal. I'm hearing it's like 198. Then they got 212 for uh, – PG, then they got what, 204? What did what they get for Maxi? I believe. Wow. Well, all three of them guys, they're going to be over 600. And then you got Tatum, Brown, just them two guys, even though they got the ring, they're going to be, they're six at 600. If you're a GM right now, would you rather have be paying 600 to the Sixers, big three, or to Boston's big two? Keep it a C note. I'm going to go to Sixers. Why are you going to Sixers? I'm going to Sixers because, personally, I don't believe Boston would have won if everybody was healthy. I don't think they would have beat the Bucks. Okay. I don't think they would beat the Knicks. And I don't think they would have beat the Sixers. Okay. And they might have had an issue with uh, Miami if Miami was in the runners if they was all healthy. Okay. And I feel like Embiid is probably, like, 
top, he definitely top five players in the league. I don't think Brown is the top five player in the league. Right. Tatum is on the board. I, if I would have that right off the top, I'm not even thinking about it, but if I was going through the list, Tatum might not even be a top five. Right. So I don't think, yeah, they, I just feel like them guys are getting paid too much. Even though they won, like I said, they won. You know what I'm saying? You can't take that away from them. But, right. and, I, and then somebody could always justify that payment with that win. But if we're talking about strictly the talent, I think Paul George is better than both of them dudes. Okay. He, he, and Embiid is just unstoppable. Right. And Maxi, he showed me something. Even though they got Drew, too. But Max Drew's about 75 years old. So, I'll take the sixes. Okay. I'm I'm taking Boston, Vito. And here's why. And and even after the year after they got knocked, not, not the, the year uh, Denver just won the championship. And they were starting to talk all that super max. I said it right then and there. Jalen and Jason homegrown. You might as well keep them together. Mm-hmm. At the end of the day, they're homegrown talent. They make a lot of money, but they've got so many years playing on the same team that you can just fit pieces in better. And Bede has an injury problem. In about two years, Paul George will uh, 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 be old, considered old. And so... I think a lot of the weight of the team is going to go on Tyrese Maxey. Yes, it should. M- m- me personally. But um, I don't know if you realize it. I don't know if NBA fans realize it. But if you pull up the list of the last four or five teams to win the championship, none of them teams are teams that have been Plato put together. Them teams are teams with a core that have been together. You got Boston this year. Last year, you got Murray and Jokic and Porter. They're all homegrown talent. The year before that, I know Golden State got Wiggins, but you still had Steph, Clay, Jordan Poole, and Draymond Green. Who won it the year before that? Milwaukee, Giannis, Chris Middleton, dumb guys is the core. I don't know when people are going to realize it, but all that putting super teams together, it's just not going to work. They already given, I don't know if you've seen it, but they're already given the Sixers passes if they don't make it to the championship saying that it takes a big three one year. It's taking a big three one year. I can agree with that. To, to, uh, that's an excuse, though, but I can also see that. like Because your first year in, you don't want to come in and step on toes, so you might defer more than you would. Right, so, right. and I think that does play a part. And I get it, Maxi and Embiid is homegrown talent. they both been on the same team, but Maxi is just starting to rise, and Embiid, like, again, I said, is always hurt. So that that would be the knock on them. You know what, what I think the problem is with the Sixers? I think even though Embiid is the best player, he should be the second option. I think Maxi should be the first option because – you put the ball in his Even hands. with Paul George now? Even with them, yeah, because Paul George is older. Think about it. Maxie ain't no great. He's, he can shoot, but he ain't no great shooter. Right. As far as when I say first option, I don't necessarily mean we're going to look for him right now. Right. I feel like when he gets the ball, his whole thing should be getting in the paint, as much, the paint touching the paint as much as possible so he can drive and kick. Right. Paul George can catch and shoot. He can create. And then be, he beats up when he's not on the block that often. He can do his little 15, 18 footers. Right. And then you work your way out, and then you start dumping it down. And, you know what I'm saying? See, like, and, and, and I believe this is the year that I don't think NB needs to try to average 30, 35. Nah. I think this is a year where he should try to average in between 26 to 28 points. He should average more assists. Let, yeah. More stuff, let, and then be dumping that let, shit on. Let them guys, let them other guys – not 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 just because he got better players on his team because you don't got to put all that wear and tear on your body, all that extra they wear and tear. They should have kept Kev, Kenya Martin's son. They did keep they him. They did? They, yeah, they re-signed him. Oh, I thought he left. You know, yeah, they, they that's the type him. of player they need. Because like I said, if you got him beat on a post, instead of always looking to score, he should be looking to pass right. and create shit. Like how yoga should be doing, and with an athletic ball like that coming off the baseline on the other side. I will say this, right? If Team USA is any good, 
And B will, because again, like I said, Kerr is playing him like a traditional big man. Mm-hmm. Pause. If Team USA is good, if their practices is intense like the Dream Team, and B will definitely come back to the Sixers a better passer. Yeah. And if he doesn't, that just shows you that that whole thing over Paris was a joke. I feel Me like personally. certain dudes are their own biggest nightmare because I feel like Embiid just don't go as hard as he could. Maybe he do, but it don't look like it. Could but he don't. The game re- comes so easy. He don't really have to go as hard. Like Jokic don't like. Jokic, when he's setting up up top and he letting them dudes run off screens, he's also getting his yeah, getting gas. I mean, but getting a that's break. what I'm saying. Style of play make it look different too. Yeah. Think about it. When Russ play, it's like he always going hard, but he might be just cruising. He that's just his style. Yeah. Of play. yeah. Um. Last season of the NBA on TNT, they tried to pull the last second for Nangle. NBA wasn't going for that. They said that they did have a right to match the offer. NBA said the time ran out. So that's going to take away Chuck and all them guys. Even though Charles was saying he was retiring after the season, what's your thoughts of the final season of the NBA on TNT? Um, I don't know what the fuck is wrong with him. Like, if certain shit ain't broke, don't try to fix it. Like, right. the, the chemistry that them boys got up there, man, is unmatched. Like, that they're probably doing, throughout a, one game, they probably do, like, 10, 15 minutes of talking and shit. Right. And that shit is like a fucking series. Yeah. Like, motherfuckers really tune, like, on them corny-ass games that be on some nights. Yeah. I watch this to see Even them. the late-night show. Yeah. They late night show. They what, late. what they should do is they should create a podcast all together and talk about the games the same. Watch right. the games, like kind of like how Kevin Hart be doing. Watch the games and do their right. own thing so they could be cursing and all types of shit. It would be way right. better. Right, right. Um, or, you know, because Shannon Sharp, even though he don't be having the highlights, they do like the nightcap too. Yeah. Um, but I... I Man, they've been with TNT for a minute, so yeah. for like, for like me, it's crazy because I know it's going to sound like I'm old, but I'm just now used to the NBA being on ESPN and ABC after mm-hmm. all them years. With uh, what's my man name? Uh, 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 damn, what's his name? The guy that be ho- he might be host. No, I don't know who doing the Olympics this year. Uh, Cos, what's his name? Bob Cos, Cos, yeah. Like when they was doing all the all the games and even the theme music, they said they bringing the theme music back. But I'm just getting used to like Mike Breen and all them guys. Like, Man, what are they gonna replace them guys with? They gonna try they, to force? Uh, what's the girl with the chick name? Well, they got Malika? what you call it? Got them now. Prime, Amazon got the NBA games. That's what I'm saying. And, but they gonna have to put somebody. Yeah, I don't in know. There to I, I don't know who like, they gonna put Please don't try to there. force the, these these newer people down our throat. Because I I don't what you call it. This past season when the NFL was on a uh, Prime, I wasn't watching a pregame and all I'm that. Not, that. Come on, man. I, I I didn't watch none of that. But even the, the the people that I'm that may say that I'm being old, I'm just saying that to say this: like in 20 years, when the deal is up and they leave ESPN or whoever they leave and go somewhere else, y'all gonna feel the same way we feel right now. Mm-hmm. I'm just keeping it to see no fight coming up. We got Bud Crawford, we got Ish, Ishriel Madra move. We both got bud, right? No upsets. Or I don't nothing, even right? know who the other boy is. Bro. Other boy is 10 and, 10 and 0 with one draw. He don't even got enough How fights. Got, yo, that's crazy. How he get a, the bud fight with 10? Because bud, bud moved up to that weight. He needed a tune-up fight before he fight whoever he going to fight next. Oh, all right. That's, you that's, know that's what I mean? So, uh, quick question. I know we Philly guys and we fans of Boots, and I recently said I don't think after watching a couple fights, not this last fight in Philly, but the one before that, I said Boots wasn't ready for Bud. But as Philly guys, I know we still want to see Boots get that fight and that payday. Are you mad at a Bud Crawford, he says, 
he's looking for a legacy fight with somebody like Canelo before even he's not thinking boots. No, listen, this is my thing. From boots, not his last one, but the one before that, I said he wasn't ready. But from watching this most recent one, I feel like he is ready. Okay. Because they both fought this ball in boots. Right. Look good fighting against this ball with Crawford just looked okay. Right. Against this guy. But I don't know if it was by technique or not, but Boots did take a lot of clean punches from Boots. True. But from the shit I've seen about the Crawford fight and this guy, because somebody ran it back comparing them, Crawford took a lot of clean shots from Boots, too. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, I, I got to go run back like They and had a watch. comparison, like, round for round of how many clean shots – Boy was catching Crawford with. Oh yeah, I gotta run it back and uh watch that joke. Now, as far as legacy fight, that may be the case for Crawford, but why would you? Now I understand why you would chase somebody like Canelo because Canelo is a bigger money fight, right? A bigger name, and Canelo is kind of on his way out. Right. So Crawford probably can. I don't even. Maybe, maybe he can clean. Listen, him up. I want to tell you something, right? Because I seen something on the internet where Floyd. Floyd's, I mean, not Floyd, Tank's uh, manager was saying black versus black fighters doesn't sell as big because it's the same demographic. I can see that. You know what I mean? So he was like a lot of times, like, that's why the bigger names are rather chase like a Mexican yeah. fighter. Think about or Oscar Spanish. was the man for so, years, right. so long, and who took that title? Floyd. Because but that's Oscar. who he compared it to. Because he like, if you really look, Floyd didn't fight a lot of black people. Yeah, he fought. Oscar was the biggest, and he beat Oscar. And he took over that. He took over what Oscar was doing and just upscaled it. Now, speaking of Bud Crawford, Earl Spence recently said that he wants to fight Fedora. Then he wants to run it back with Bud Crawford. Keep it a scene, though. What's your thoughts on that? I wouldn't watch Earl fight for free. <laughs> That's funny. It, it's crazy because I I don't know if Earl's still punch drunk, but he talking like Fundora might not. Fundora hit hard too, and I fin- don't I, I don't want to see it because it's like abuse at this point. He don't he's not himself. <laughs> Listen, so yeah, I know you just said you were watching for free. <laughs> no, I'm gonna so, watch it, but I would. So I wouldn't pay for it. It it. If you had to watch one rematch, what would it be? Would it be Earl versus Bud 2? Or would it be Devin Haney versus Ryan Garcia 2? Keep it a C-note. Definitely Devin and Ryan because I feel like Devin going to come out with a different game plan and he's going to win the fight. I don't think Earl got a chance with Bud. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Vito, shout out to that. I agree with everything you said. I ain't even got to add nothing else to it. Yeah. Earl Spence, and listen to me, man. I'm not trying to bid or nothing, man. But if you got any more thoughts of fighting that man, like, erase them immediately. Yeah, yeah. You better off trying to get somebody pop that listen. nigga, man. <laughs> My advice to Earl Spence is take the biggest money fights on the biggest bums. Line up all the top guys that ain't, well, not the top guys. Line up all the lower level guys. That can you can make some money off of and fight them. Listen, I end it like this: if if Earl Spence gets to fight Fedora and Fedora puts him out, it's over for Earl Spence. Shout out uh, Danny Garcia too. He he got a fight on uh who he on somebody under he on Canelo undercard co-main event. Shout out Danny Garcia. You know who he yeah, uh, I don't know the guy's name off top. I seen it pause, but uh, I can't recall. But uh, shout out to Swift Garcia. He ain't been in the ring in a while. I'm going to keep it a C-No with you, Danny. Don't pull a, uh, Adrian Broner out of this job, Nobody man. Nobody can pull Adrian Broner because Danny always – Danny hit hard, but I feel like Danny's kind of like a robot when he fight, like real stiff. But he's still good. Adrian Broner don't throw no fucking punches. I'm just saying that because I don't know the last time Garcia was in the ring. Oh, yeah. He, 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 was, he was just at the last couple of fights I've seen him in the crowd. I know he acted, he though. He trigger finger. Not just that. He always on IG, oh, though, yeah. with reels and all that. Yeah, so, I know he acted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. So, you know, you got anything else? Uh, Nah, not that I can think of. Uh, I ain't got nothing else. We about to wrap this episode up, people. We appreciate everybody for tuning in. Again, if this is your first time tuning in, salute to you. 
Do us a favor, please hit the sub button, like button, and the bell so you can stay notified when we drop new content. Don't be afraid to leave a comment if you agree, disagree, want to correct us on something, or if you want to call one of us an Uber, let us know in the comments. Just make sure you keep it a C note, and please share this video with someone who likes to talk sports and entertainment just like you. So that we can all talk that talk together. As always, I am your boy Brown. To the left of me, we got Vito. Please tell a friend to tell a friend to tell a friend to tell everybody. Keep the C note. We holler at y'all. This is what I'm feeling like. Da, 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 da. Let me tell you what I'm feeling like. Da, da, da.